The other day I got a call from a patient of mine. He said that it's been so many years, so many decades we've been trying to get a cure for hair loss through medical research. So many lab mice have been tortured over the years. We have made them submit to our research so that we get the data that we desire. The data we desire to get more funding for research to continue. Well, with so much research, so much funding having gone into hair loss research over the decades and nothing come out of it. That is what patients are going to think about medical research in hair loss. There is still no cure in sight. Today, the demand for a safe and effective cure for hair loss is at its peak. The average hair loss sufferer has waited long enough for this cure to happen, but is now getting increasingly frustrated. Many have even shaved off their heads and come to terms with their baldness, embrace their baldness, so to say. Because every five years you wait, the cure is still five years away. And it has been almost 40 years since the medical field, the researchers have been promising hair loss sufferers and hair loss physicians that the cure is around the corner. But it is not happening. So is there something wrong with medical research in hair loss? Is hair loss research just a platform to get more funding for research? Abandon a particular research in a line of treatment? Realign your business interests, get more funding and move on to the next research. But things are happening. Things are happening and things when they happen, they keep our spirits high. And recently, Polychem has introduced a topical form of finasteride in the European market and they call it P3074. But what is more promising is the topic for the day that is injectable finasteride. So please hang on. So baldness is reaching pandemic proportions around the world. If we observe college students, 60% of them have some sort, some grade of baldness or the other. So with such a large population suffering from hair loss and some suffering from low self-esteem because of hair loss and there being no cure in sight except for surgical hair restoration, which is applicable to only a minority of such patients. It is but human to question about why and how medical research in hair loss industry is not taking us anywhere. Science, medical research in many other fields has not let us down till today. Many human afflictions, diseases already have a cure. But hair loss field has been neglected. Perhaps it's because it's not a life-threatening disorder. People see it as a commercial money-making industry. And people continue to live in hope seek respite by applying various magic lotions and potions and snake oils which come out into the market every other day. So in this background, the background of expectant anxiety of hair loss sufferers, when I read about injectable finasteride, the research in South Korea on injectable finasteride, I thought I would go into the details and tell my subscribers about it. So the good news is that a team in South Korea led by Dr. Kim Byom Joon of Chang Ong University Hospital have successfully tested injectable finasteride and they're very confident that this is the cure for hair loss. And their work was published in a paper titled The Development of Finasteride Polymer Microspheres for Systemic Application in Androgenetic Alopecia. So finasteride loaded microspheres containing polylactic or glycolic acid in the ratio 4 is to 1 were injected subcutaneously into a mouse model with testosterone induced androgenetic alopecia. And this treatment was found to completely reverse androgenetic alopecia in these mice. The hair growth success rate was 93.3% in the injection group when compared to 86.7% with the oral finasteride group. The dihydrotestosterone levels, the DHT levels, remained lower and comparable to oral finasteride even 10 weeks after a single injection. Daewoom Pharmaceuticals of South Korea have won the approval to go ahead with phase 1 clinical trials in Australia. Trials for their finasteride loaded polymer microspheres which they call as IVL3001. So Daewoom aims to release this product in the market in 2023 
that is 18 months from now. The best part of this treatment is that you will get one injection per month. The most interesting, the most significant nugget that I found from this paper, from this research work done by Dr. Kim's team in South Korea, is that hair growth with finasteride loaded microspheres, that is injectable finasteride, was found to be superior to that of oral finasteride. This is the first research I've found since many years, which is not ambiguous about the comparison between injectable finasteride and oral finasteride. And the stated results seem to be promising to me because they are not shrouded in a maze of figures. Though these finasteride loaded microspheres exhibit continuous in vitro drug release for up to six weeks, it is required by hair loss sufferers to be injected once a month. Given the daily routine we have to maintain with oral finasteride and given the many side effects that may happen with oral finasteride, though in a very small minority of patients, this comes as a huge relief. This will not only improve the compliance of taking finasteride, but the abject phobia that the very mention of the word finasteride evokes in some people is hoped to be a thing of the past. So I hope this will improve the compliance of patients to finasteride because finasteride is the only proven drug that prevents the progression of baldness in future. This is the only scientifically proven drug that has been used for over 40 years and in most patients it does not fail in the management of hair loss. So we all hope and pray that injectable finasteride will soon be in the market and it will be as effective if not better than oral finasteride. Well, thank you for watching again. If you have any queries about hair loss and hair transplant, do let me know and I'll be happy to answer. And God bless you.